Welcome you to the All Ireland Intermediate Semi Final in Kingspan Breffney Park. That is the holding, of course, and now today we have the Leitrim versus the Down. So Leitrim Fontenay, Leitrim Fontenay is from County Down. They will play two arenes just outside of Ballyhon if they win on Mayo. Leitrim will line out of in goals, the former forward Michal McCart, right foot Ronan McRickard, full back is Oshin Duggan in the left corner, Robbie O'Hare. Right half back, replacing number five, the injured Matthew Lennigan is number 26, Cormac Lynch. In the centre is William McCart, and on the left side, Pierce Davidson. Middle of the park, Rory McRickard wears the eighth shirt, and number nine is Conor McRickard. Right three quarter, Paddy Joe McComiskey, on the 40 is Peter Davidson, and in the left corner, Pierce O'Hare McRickard. Top of the right is Chairman Murphy on the square, Jared McAleen on top of the left, Sean Duggan. The men from the west will line out as follows. In goals is Bobby Douglas. Right full, Connor Henry. Full back, Michael Morley. And in the left corner, Oshin Greedy. Right half back is Joe Boyle. In the centre, Stephen Coyne. And on the left side, David Kenny. Middle of the park, Sean Kenny wears eight. And Daniel Huan wears nine short. Right three quarter, Liam Lavin. On the 40, Fergus Bo Fergal Bolin. And on the left side, Brian Morley. Top of the right, a huge injury uh, uh, worry. Or not worry, he's out for the day with a hamstring injury, I believe. The Mayo and indeed the club captain Shane Boland he is replaced by number 25 Sean Regan so 25 is, re is replacing number 13 on the f full forward line then making up the remainder of same Cahill Freeman who plays in on the square and on the left corner is Owen Delaney we will ha have a referee here I do believe uh, the referee is a Dublin man so we will be ready to go with the national anthem and then we'll be ready to go here in this All Ireland Intermediate Final for both teams. Teams and board. officials, yeah, one minute, final. one minute we'll national anthem. Between the champions of uh, Munster and the champions of Leinster. So Turin, Turin, 18, 1888 to find, I believe, uh, when the Leeds from Fontenay were formed, they were the first club and still to my knowledge the only club ever to win the double in the one year, the Senior Hurling and Senior Football in County Down in the one season. Uh, one name, of course, that many people in Cavan here would remember, a man who won a couple of Irelands with the downman, Colm McAlarney. Colm, a wonderful midfielder. Uh, Turin, as I said, just nestles in on the Galway was common uh, father, but it is in Mayo, close to Bally Harness. They were formed in 57, winning the first senior championship in 66. Uh, Joe Henry, a man that was uh, one of our most famous hurlers, if not our most famous hurler, he's a man that would have played with 14 Galway men in a Railway Cup. Can I ask all non playing members to please leave the, the Galwegian. So, Joe Henry, a famous hurler, the full forward here, Cahill Freeman, his late brother, Adrian. Akarja, Shasagu Suis Lahai, Aron Navil. Uh, their field is now called in his honour uh, Adrian Regan Field. So, Folks, we're ready now to start this intermediate semi final here in Kingsman Refley. After a week of heavy frost, but the pitch looks to be in good shape. I note our own James Clark here as linesman on this side of the field. So, Fury and Nads, they will wear white and they will uh, play towards Cabin Town, so they'll be playing right to left if you look out. Fontenay's will wear the hoop jerseys, the green, white and gold, so the fleet from Fontenay's, they will be obviously playing out towards Balignan. A lot of positional changes, we'll get to those in a while, and the left half forward, Pierce Ward McCricket, the captain, he's been in to operate, uh, he's been in at full forward position, so now she's in and she's on. Heading towards town goals, as I said, 
It's the 13 man there, Sean Duggan, and he sends that in close, but it's tough knocked down there by one of the defenders. Of... We have a couple of men standing up here, it's just hard to see what's going on down in that corner. Still in possession here, good possession here, now the corner forward has it, he's pushed out, he's very close to the sideline, but it's going to be cleared out here now by Turin. Fine ball out there towards Morley at the half forward line, gets it at the second one of Askin, rounds his man, goes fast out of the field, plays a nice ball, to an advancing half back, and the half back is Joe Boyle, Joe Boyle unable to get to it, gets to it in the second attempt, but being well harried there by the, his uh, midfield opposition there, and that is Conor McCricker. Sideline cut, and the cut will be to... The men from the west, as I said, they play left to right as we look out onto the field. Goalkeepers both have put on darker jerseys, so I'm sure that the referee is happy enough with that, that he has discussed that with Sam. Sideline cut, and a good one it is, up into the corner. The foot race is on, the cricket is there, going in there, trying to dispossess him as Delaney. Falling across the top. Opportunity here now. It's going to be sent in by Freedom, going to turn on the left side. Doubles on it, sends it high, sends it straight, and he sends it over the bar. That's a good score from Paul Freeman, and it was good work, and it all came as a result of a good sideline cut there taken on the far side of the field, just about the midway stage. Going in there now for the first time is Michal McCartan. Michal, of course, as we said before, at 34 playing in his 18th year, but he is a, a converted uh, forward. The quick up on it. Conor McCricker takes the short one, he sends her downfield, in around the house, she's in, ball breaking down, it's going to come to all on his own, you back in there, is Michael Morley, Morley has it, has it on the stick, cutting it across now to his left back, but just a little bit maybe dangerous play in there, dangerous in the sense of, uh, there's a lot of congestion in there, now without touching Greedy, the corner back, Greedy has it, still Greedy, he's showing how far side of the field, nice ball into the forward there by Conor Henry. Henry gets it in, but it's good working inside there by Robbie O'Hare. O'Hare gets it to his corner forward, Sean Duggan, who seems to play him very deep out the field. Goes for a long one, and it goes all the way out to the left and wide. Hard to believe it there, but that was a long, long clearance, but it went all the way left and wide. That is the first wide of the afternoon for either side, and it goes, of course, to the Fontenay's from the county down. Quick one is taken. Out far side of the field, unable to get it clean on the first touch but does get it in and get down into the corner, down into the man that's replacing the number 25, Sean Regan there, but it goes past him and it will be a sideline cut to the men from County Down. Sean Regan just unable to get to that one, but it was certainly a very, very... Both teams seem to be adapting the idea of quick puck outs, but the wind, whatever's in it, all of the elements will be with the down man here in the first half. The man, of course, to clear that ball was Joe Boyle. It's possession here now. Going up here now, and the advancing here, the Freeman who has it, is he going to go for the net here? He's going to send her in, and he sends her in and hits the back of the net there. Carl Freeman, wonderful goal, nothing but net there. He had that nothing but on his head. It was an interception. Uh, the sideline cut wasn't properly hit on the uh, Freeman as a goal in the point, and there he going. He's come back out around the middle of the field, and McCricker here sends a long one down around the danger area, going to drop around the house. There's a lot of extra bodies down there, and it comes in now. It looks like Connor Henry has it. Connor Henry is dispossessed. Lost it, gets it back at the second time of Ask, and throws it out to his 40 yard man, Boland. Boland has it, Boland is fouled. Three is going to be out, he's down. He picked up a knock, he looks like he's going to be okay, so. But certainly, yeah, they're packing up the defence there, are the Mayo lads, so too are the Fontenay's. I would imagine, with uh, the amount of wind advantage that the goalkeeper coming out here, Bobby Douglas is going to be the taker, that maybe the Fontenay's need to drive it forward. Far side of the field, going to be heading out here, I think. Late from Fontenay, man, has it? Going to be back in the front from Boland. Boland again, or rather, sending her in with a Freeman. Freeman sending her in high and sending her straight. And it's gone to the left and wide, just out to the left and wide, push wide for the Mayo man. That was the one that he had most time on. He has a goal on the point, that's a wide. And now, once again, Michal McCart take a look at his options. He has his left half back, Davidson out on the far side, but he's going to go longer. That's a fine ball. Is it going to go across the head? It is, and it's well done. And it gets back in, partially hooked, and the ball is going to be hit diagonally across field. Coming out there with it, flicked out to the side. And here come men from the west. Out hook from back there to Henry. Henry back in. He gets it across this half back. David Kenny. David Kenny to the corner back. Greeley. Greeley gets it down to the right three quarter. Lavin. Still Lavin. Still Lavin. Lavin had it. Lavin was well dispossessed, but his manager there not happy that that ball should have been released. Comes to Duggan. Duggan. Duggan getting it down inside. Down inside there. Back in and a little beautiful steal there from Kenny. Kenny. Kenny has it. Freeman. 
Out far side now to the corner back, Henry. Henry, first touch lets him down, but he gets it in the second time. He's getting it to his other corner back, Greeley. Greeley going in across the top, but it's not enough on it, and it's well intercepted there. Down it comes into the danger zone, but uh, all on his own here there is the left half back, David Kenny. Kenny goes over far side of the field to the left half forward, Morley. Morley dukes inside his man. This time he goes for distance. He drives it up into the corner. It's going to be a difficult one inside there. Looking for the free, with the, or rather looking for the free inside there was Delaney. He didn't get it. Sent down by Pierce Davidson. Down it comes. Mistake inside there by the two Reen men. There was two of them there. Had a chance, and now it's going to be an opportunity for them to get open the score and sent in, sent high. And it's sent over the bar there by Conor McCricket. First score for his side, score from play, and that's really one that got away from the two Reen lads, two players there. But I noticed there that the left half back said, Let's settle down here, lads. This game is going at a frantic pace. Quick one goes out again, one time to Joe Boyle. Joe Boyle all on his own here. Centre forward now, Boland. Still Boland. Has it on the stick, has a man in, inside, still Boland as he has it. He's going to step, strike it off his left side, sends it in of his left side, and he sends it over the bar, and he's the second score for the club. Boland too plays a point, that's a fine score from Boland. Douglas, rather, Michal McCart inside, taking a look at his options. He's going to change now out towards the middle of the stand side of the field. Ball in across heads, and it's going to go all the way back. Is it going to be kept in play? Kept in play inside there by the centre back. Pine. Pine going to send it out to Kenny David. Unable to get to it there now. It's going to be in and it's going to be a sideline cut. Looks like it's going to be a sideline cut on James Stark. I do believe got it right on this occasion. Sean Duggan is down there, picked up a knock, but certainly that did look from here as if it was going to be a touring ball, and that's how the Lions person seen it also. Duggan is up, he's going to be okay. He's looking to give directions. Good strike. Again, it's one for Freeman. Freeman causing all kinds of problems. Sent high, sent straight, for sent over the bar. Freeman has the goal in two, his side of a goal in three. That's a good strike, but again, it came from the sideline cut, and a fine sideline cut it was. Off the stick of Sean Kenny. Here comes the front and eyes, Davidson. Davidson is foul, he gets an advantage, high challenge. It's going to be a free, it's going to be just something to lift the siege. The wind seems to have died slightly since the start of this game. We're eight minutes and change into it, and it will be taken by the big number eight, Rory McCrickard. He bends, he lifts, and he strikes. This is a nice high one. Is it going to have the distance? Is it going to have the distance all right? Does it have the radar? It looks like from here it's going to stay just to the left and wide. That's exactly what it does. So it's two wides, plays one. One three plays a point. Six plays one. Eight and a half gone. Eight and change here. Once again, Bobby Douglas tries to go out far side of the field and looks to have found his man. That man is Boyle. Boyle has it. He has a man in support. That man now has it. The man that had it was his corner back, Ushin Greeley. Greeley getting it back upside. Here's another opportunity now, and from distance, is it the centre forward? It strikes that one, it licks it out to the right and wide, and that's a second wide. He had an opportunity there, maybe to advance it a bit, but certainly he had the radar on it. That was the forward there, Fergal Bull, and the centre forward. Quick one is taken. Here comes more like it, maybe from the phantom of the bar, but the corner comes. They win a sideline cut out of it, so Torino do get it, but that just didn't have enough on it from Pierce Davidson just to find his man, but it is hit across the side and on the stand side of the field, and the red, the red helmet here now of the electric ball of Pierce Oden McCrickard. McCrickard looking at his options, he wants maybe a bit more movement of his forward inside. Inside it comes, he does find it inside, but he's going to come all the way inside. Far side of the field is going to be sent down towards the left half forward. Morley, he won't get to this one, but pull back. Pushing Duggan will win the match here. Duggan wins it. Get the back inside. Good piece of defending there, and Greeley has it, Greeley clears it down, and it's hit out across the sideline. Not by Greeley, but it will be a sideline ball. Sideline cut to, uh, to Turin. Uh, one of the Fontenay defenders just got a stick on that one. I it was the right three quarter, actually. Paddy Joe McCoskey. Yeah. 
It's all taking his own sweet time. Now the Phantom Knights have gone low with a, maybe a, an orthodox approach. Good sideline cut in towards the corner. So he's going to go all the way out. No one's kept it play inside there now. Inside, looks like the Phantom Knights are going to be the one to clear it. It's going to be a bit of a re roll was really booty inside there. The right foot quarter in there, Lavin seems to be the man in possession. He's going far side of the field to the centre forward of the ground. It's only a bowler. Holden had it almost too much time on it. Quick defender there by the continent. Away they go, and away goes McRicket. McRicket sending a good ball into his corner forward. Inside it goes. It's silly inside there to the man wearing the number eight jersey, but he's playing inside and he strikes that one. Don't forget good foot on it and goes out to the left and wide. He thought it was going to be a, a 65, but no, the umpires haven't none of it, so that's a, a wide. But certainly in on the other side of the ball, that occasion, Fergal Boland had lots of time, almost two times, and that ball is struck down again. Well kept in play there by the half forward, Sean Morley, but it's cleared now. It looks to be going to be by Ronan McQuicker. Now it's going to be this big number eight again, Rory McRickard, inside it is, he's still on it, he's an opportunity now to go for a score from distance and that could be an inspirational score, as it stay inside the post now, it just stays out to the right and wide, four wides now, four leads from it, certainly that was a fine effort, it was very, very little in it. Douglas this time now is slowing her down, he has the full back in front of him on his own here. That's exactly where he goes. Saying he's inside. inside. Referee says no, not Ball. inside. Ball. Up to go. Ball up the hand, trying to get the hand on it there with the half forward Lavin. It's going to be cleared there. Rory McCricket. He nice ball over the top. Something is coming more and more into it. That's going to be struck in. It's going to go to the left, I do believe, and out to the left and wide. But not using the inside line there now, but five wides there, four of them coming in quick succession. Twelve and change gone on the clock here in this first half of the Iron Intermediate Club semi final. Kingspan Breffney Park on a cold but dry Sunday thus far. This game, of course, was we played yesterday, but we had a frozen pitch. Douglas goes out far side. Fine Boyle. Boyle now being marked, he was getting a free one of it there for a long time, but not anymore. Boyle gets timber on it and he sends it in high, but it goes in across the top, comes all the way to the centre back. William McCartan, he has it, getting it back outside, but only out as far as Kenny in the middle of the field. That's Sean Kenny, that is. Inside it comes inside of the man who starts today for the captain Boland. Unable to hold possession there with Sean Regan. Free coming out, high challenge. Certainly another one that maybe got away for Turin, but the long ball is going all the way to left and right so far for the Fontanais, and maybe they need to use an inside forward, maybe try and strike an odd ball down the centre. They're going very close to the corner flags when they do hit them inside of the fouls, but a lot of work to do. Three on the 20 ward, one metre line by Rory McCricker. Long one, dangerous one, down all the way. Keeper does well, does very well. It's going to be out for 65. At but all the way and the keeper had to be very very alert because the other ones that looked simple but they were actually very very difficult it went all the way from the 21 meter line dropped on the edge or, or, or just in across the full back and on small parallelogram and the keeper had to be very very alert there to push that one out to safety but this should be certainly an opportunity now to get the second score on the board into 14 heading into the 15 minute of this first half the taker it looks like will be Pierce Oden McCricket Pierce Oden has his own style Bends, lifts and strikes. Sends are high. Looks good from here. That's exactly what it is. Let's go. Six plays two. Douglas this time changes sides. Going out far side of the field. Stand side that is. And it goes well. Keep it down with a He sends a high. But it's going to stay out to the right and wide. That's three wides with the men from the west. And taking a quick look out there is Neil McCartan to see what's on short. It's finally coming down left centre. Doing well in there is Kenny. John Kenny. Now it's Fergal Boland. Still Fergal Boland. Boland is in there. Boland is tucked from behind. It's going to be the midfielder there, Connor McCricket, for his opening score. The referee says no, he's okay, no, he's going to talk to him. It's a little bit of a tug there.
No, referee was taking his own sweet time there now, and it's going to be Carter Boy. Sean Kenny, the man who made this possible, it was between himself there and David Kenny, getting, uh, doing well to get that attack on way. So this is probably outside of his range, given that that's quite a strong breeze that he'll be hitting into. Again, has his style, as more young players nowadays, have that style of facing the ball direct on rather than side on when they make their approach. Send her in high, sent high, is it going to stay? Yes, it's successful. And it's going on to the right and line and four wides. Wind just catching that one at the end. Freeman, meanwhile, now after a blistering start, has gone a little bit quieter there, but he has played a little bit deeper. Out they come, all up for this one. All breaking. The down men have it. Big, strong, powerful player with the full forward there, Jarlot McAleen, sending her inside. Jarlot doing well after great defence there by his cornerback and his halfback, then men being Greeley and Kenny. But only down the throat of the Fontenay man. He has a pocket pick. Good one again up the field. And as soon as I say he got quiet, he goes back all the way downfield. Trying to get her back inside the lane inside. The lane. Far side of the field, he goes to the score and he sends her in. Liam Latham was gone all on his own. He was looking inside, but it was a fine score. He will take it, but certainly there was an opportunity inside. But the opportunity this time, they took the point, probably the sensible thing to do. And here they come with the lady again. As it back it comes now towards Freeman. Freeman has it. Still Freeman. Freeman trying to find his man inside, unable to do so. Off his knees. A cricker sending her down. He's going to send it straight to Joe Boyle. Joe Boyle feels it. Has all the time in the world. Almost too much of it. Up it comes to Boland. Still Boland. Russian options. He's going to send her in high. That's going to be a late challenge. Will it be He'll send high and straighten over the bar? Roland there took a heavy knock into the chest. Is he, going to be, is he going to talk to somebody? I don't know what exactly is going to happen here. He's going to talk to a player now. That, I think it might be Pierre Jordan, the cricket, that he wants to speak to. No. If it's number nine, number nine is possibly in trouble. Not quite sure what's happened. Has that score been allowed? Has it been disallowed? But it's. Boland released that ball. Maybe it was for a, a foul on the ball. I'm not quite sure what it is. It looks like it's going to be a free going in. Uh, Pierce Oak McCricket is a, maybe a foul on the ball that we didn't hear the referee's whistle. And Pierce Oak McCricket had it, but certainly Boland took a challenge there as he hit that one over the bar. That one that would not count. Cricket lines are up. It goes in high and it's gone over the bar. It did not. With the two-point corner around there, let's just see how the two read men react. Up they come. Boyle, on his own. Lord Max inside his man. Doubles on that one, but he puts maybe a lot of air into it, so it'll be interesting if Lavin does have it. And they're uh, well for over carrying. That was an opportunity there. 20, 19 minutes in here for the first half. It plays three. Golden five to three points. We're in the quicker again. Long, long range one. Which way is she going to go? Up to the left and wide. Again, that's a two occasions there with a bit of long range freeze wide, and one would be better off maybe taking another one, just maybe dropping a shot to see maybe he could a forward pick up out of the end of it. But they're going to have to do something about the amount of ball that Joe Boyle in the half back end there is getting uncontested. That's certainly going to be a concern for them. It's going to be sideline, well kept in play there by Lavin. Inside it comes, inside it comes, inside. Regan unable to get to it. Well played there by the centre back, McCarthy. Opportunity here now for the score. Looks good from here. So a ball that should have been won inside there by Sean Regan comes back down the field and it goes over the bar. 
So, it's all to pay for. Out it comes here and out of the centre back, Stephen Clown. Stephen Clown. The top back is going to be a free to kind. The keeper of Bobby Douglas will be the man that will come out to take it. We were 40 metres out from his own goal, and no doubt he'd probably try and drop this one in around the house. Game is settling in, and Fontenay is coming more and more into it. Bends, lifts, strikes, goes long. Full back has it. Pushing Duggan. Clearance. Only comes as far as Delaney. And on Delaney, that is. Had it. Overplayed it. Made the more direct hurling of late. But again, dispossessed, and it's a long one, and it's going to go out to the right and wide. That was an opportunity there, but the top line were coming down field, but they were dispossessed. And it's five wides now, please. Six. Keeper McCartney's coming out of the double. He's going to go long. He goes long, sending her now another danger. But this is one of the shot on the edge of the D. And this perhaps is the type of ball they need to be getting in there. Now it's the full forward. Full forward has it fixed it across. Go ball, says the referee, and it's going to be three on the 40, five metre line. Bobby Douglas makes his way out. 22 minutes gone here in this first half. All Ireland Intermediate semi final. Good stuff, very committed stuff for both sides. Fairness to Turin, that started off in a really serious pace, but they've been settled down now and only a four point game, so all to play for. We all know that's two pucks of a ball, well, in any sport, but it's a hurling that can happen very, very quickly. How did it come towards Regan? Regan is able to get to it. Fontaine is having it. Keep a hand. First time of asking, lets them down. McCricket still has it. Still McCricket. Has his pocket picked. Bowling, I believe it was. Got it open to the far side of the field. Going to be a side man, but that was going to be a three-way ball. Up at the kind of four there, already kept it in play. Down the field they go. Kenny has it. Kenny tries it down along the line. Or right down the, to his midfield partner. But he Pocket fixed, it was red, and it's going to be coming down field now by Connor McCricket. Right. Now, in that time for Pierce over McCricket, right. he goes some distance, sent him down. That's a good away score from Ed Reed. They had an opportunity there, but Daniel Duan there gave the free that was telegraphed and intercepted, well intercepted. Three point game, 23 and change here in the fourth half. Out they go again. This time it's Pine picking up the short one. He has Boyle in support. Boyle takes it through the hand. Now an opportunity. He's going up the left side of the field. Up they go, down in post towards Delaney. Delaney has it. Delaney still has it, does well. It's tough back and it's going to be an opportunity now for the free taker. Substitution on the lead from team number 16, Daniel McCann, will replace number 26, Cormac Lynch. 16 for 26. So you heard it there, the Cormac Lynch uh, has been replaced here now by Daniel McCann. Dan McCann goes in here now, even though he's wearing 16, he's obviously not the sub keeper. But it could be number 30, Conor Bran, if the man that might be fulfilling that role. But this is now where they may miss Shane Boland, their free taker, captain, and indeed county captain. It's taken inside, it's sent in. Sent over the bar there by the midfielder, Sean Kenny. Sean Kenny, sent it over the bar, and that might just set them down back to a four point game. 1 6 plays 5. McCartan Mihal with the puck out, because out right side of the field, that's the terrace side of the field, up they go, ball break it, not quite sure who has it, no, Fergal Boland is in this, so too with the Pantanese, now it's going to be Stephen Kine, still Kine, getting her out now to Boland, Boland making a big pocket of space on the far side of the field. Challenge there, but he... Down supporters are saying he ran straight into him, he went to one side, but... Referee says no, can't be done that way. Oshin Duggan protests his innocence now. Kenny will have another opportunity here now. Uh, Boland has taken a couple of hefty challenges there. But he seems to be up and seems to be okay. 
So once again, Sean Kenny with an opportunity in the 26th minute of this first half. Very little time thus far for any type of stoppages. Kenny sends her high. It looks like it's gone out to the right. Michael McCartan with the puck out. He's again going out fast out of the field. They seem to be getting more change out that side of the field. Ball breaking down. It's in across the top and it's not a good play from Buran. Getting it inside now to Bowlin. Still Bowlin. Bowlin getting it inside to that midfielder Buran. He's thrown it back outside now to Regan. Regan goes fast out of the field. Again intercepted. The Angels fall in around the house. Inside, inside. There now is Joe Boyle loses it. There's Joe Boyle. Good hustling in there by the Falconize, but Turi not giving up on it either. Good play inside there for number seven. If you look it over, that is uh, David Tenney. Now it's coming back out of the arm. Still the arm. Trying to get a bit of reach. So, once again, that was one that Turin had all the time in the world to have that one there. They had it go two or three times ahead, and then good hustle by the Fontenay's, and that they forced the turnover, and a fairly easy chance here from a cricket to bring it back here now, I would imagine, to a four point game. 1 7 plays 5. 27 minutes on the clock in this intermediate semi final. Bends, lifts, and strikes. Not and over the bar. Okay. Okay. So he has four points here in the first half. His side has six. Now they've pushed up half the Fontenay's. No extra man here now. So let's just put her in the melting pot here now. And they're down the field they go. She's set up, ball breaking. And the Fontenay's pick it up. Opportunity here now. Now it's going to be for Freeman. Freeman going to go across the bowler. Still bowling. Still bowling. Who has Lavin upside? Now it's Lavin inside. Lavin has it. Lavin loses it. Lavin back on the ground. Lavin back in and he sends it high and he sends it over the bar. The goal cancels on here. The corner forward left in Delaney. Uh, the lady was over the far side, but it was a good conversion and it was a good woman there. It came as a result, it's be taken again. Referee wasn't ready for that one, and it's a good score. It's hit, 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 hit across our height. Not sure if the people got a touch on it or not, but certainly he was heading for net with that one. But he did have the lady. He decided that he was going to have a go on his own. He was good work by Freeman and good work then by Bowler. Ball breaking down. Down upon Pine is first player. Can Pine get it at the first player of Askin? No, sir. Back inside is going to come inside. McCricket, that's the man they need on the ball. Still McCricket. Dangerous ball in across the top. Back inside to his centre forward. The goal catch is going to be here. As it's inside, and it's gone out to the next and wide. The wonderful piece of hooping there. Fergal goal is the man there. The 2 11 for on it. Peter Davidson had a real opportunity there for the goal, and it was great play inside there in cricket play. One have to say by Pierce Road for cricket, and he's going to have to be watched and watched tight. But certainly, fabulous hook by Bowling, and on the second chance, then it was left out to the keeper, and it left harmlessly out to the left and wide. 29 minutes gone, first half, intermediate semi final. Man down here, looks like a hand injury. Referee says yes, call on a physio, or the magic bottle will be coming in. I think it might be Oshin Grady is the. Off, but I think it might be a hand injury, not quite sure. We'll see here. Half time is nigh approaching. As I said, we're into the 30th minute here of the first half. Still no indication of added time. Helmet goes on, he's up and he's okay. Left hand, I would say. There will be at least one additional minute at the end of this half. At least one Bobby additional Douglas minute. Sitting down underneath it is Regan. Ball breaking. Comes to Freeman. Still Freeman. Looking for his opportunity to see who's inside. He's been still screaming in across the top side to flick it in, but this kind of doesn't come off. It's coming to McCricket. He's been tackled by Delaney. McCricket's still on it, and that man, McCricket, is Rory. He goes downfield. Back inside it comes. In there is Greeley. Greeley is inside there. So the muscle is on, and now it's with the other midfielder. 
Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor has it. Conor McGregor has it. Conor McGregor has fouled. Here's Old McGregor with a chance here now. I would imagine this might be the last chance of the first half. 1-8 uh, plays 6. So 11 plays 6. 5-point game. Just to bring in a 4-point game. Nothing in it. And exciting stuff here in Kingspan, Breath, Neil Ireland Intermediate Semi-Final. The men from the West. The men from the North. Leeds from Fontenay's. They take on, as we said many times before, the Tourines from just outside the town of Balahanas at Gundy on Mayo. McCricket with a chance to bring his his total to five and to the side seven. Takes a look, bends, lifts and strikes. Looks good from here. Sends her high. And it lead it is. And high press and converted. It is 35th minute is Bobby Douglas. Has to go and fetch the slitter for himself. This time he goes out fast out of the field. Out goes Joe Boyle. Joe Boyle. Doubles on it and sends her downfield. Luckily, took the double shimmy inside, inside to Delaney. Delaney has Lavin in support. Still Delaney. Is he going to have to go for a score from the awkward angle? That's exactly what he's going to do. And he sends it over the line from the angle. That's a fine score from Delaney and a fine score from Play. That probably will bring us to the half time whistle. That, in fact, is what it's all. Here at half time, one goal at nine plays seven. The 12 plays seven at the five point game. Here at the half time, he's saying
So the target just after our finish there, the threat is Torin 1 8 to Leitrim 7 points. Let's move over there. Let's move the flank there when the referee is sharpening up. This is actually a free the other way, so it's a two point swing because Leitrim can wear the free period. So the cricket, one of the side points, of course, half points. We have no changes for either side at half time. Four point game. Still all to play for. So. All to be done here when the Leitrim in the West and in the other game. Oh, there are no changes on either team at half time. There are no changes on either team. <laughs> All to be done. It looks like the wind is on the change. You look down at two different flags in front of me here. One's blowing right to left, the other one blowing left to right. So that's a little bit confusing to say the least. Referee getting ready, he's taking a look around at his options, sees everyone in place, it looks as if everyone's in place. Burger Golden has it, still rolling, making a little bit of room for himself, sending her in high in towards the corner. Dropped inside there now. Downfield with it, down back. Here's the outfield, the corner back, that was Robbie O'Hare. Back it comes, now it's a quicker, big powerhouse of a man, sending a data call. This is the need more of dropping it short. In it comes now, to drop it now for a centre foul. He takes the corner and takes the ball back. That's exactly what he does. Back inside. A bit of a scrum is in there now. Coming out with a pair of looks like pushing green. Sideline cut, side cut, cut for Turi. Yeah. So 11 points plays 7 here in the early going. But this will early bit. Two teams push. Uh, Turi, Ahamor would be the pole and then they would wear the red and white on their end of it. So the ball had, had it, I'm able to get to it. This time now it's back inside, it's going to be Freeman, Freeman, and able to keep it in play. Tahoe Freeman, it's going to be a sideline cut to the front tonight. So, the front tonight. Ladies football, Tamogi, and football club. So they have the whole thing going on, and uh, I believe Turin, they would be the, the Holland club, and Tahoe that would be the, as I say, we are red and white. I remember seeing them here in an Ireland. Final of sorts, the fail of final, but they beat New York in triple overtime. That's going to be clear. It's going to be all the way down to that man, number eight, very powerfully built man, Rory McCricket. Then sending her in a dangerous ball in. Side of the task high, there's an opportunity here now. Sent in and sent high, and it's sent out to the left of the line. Right and early going here, had all the hard work done. That might have been Connor McCricket, not quite sure who sent that one wide. Far side of the field, Bobby Douglas goes out on the terrace side of the field, but it's all going to be down there. That's going to go back inside here now. Who's going to have it? Scrum is on. And away come the Fontenay's with her, on the run. Second time of asking, got her downfield. Unable to pick it this time. Fargo Golden, that's the three out. Three out, back out. They might give away the advantage here. The half forward, but he's done promise you needless foul. Ball will be thrown in there. They're just committing the foul afterwards. Ball inside now. Again, they come out with it. A little bit, a lot of steps there. 
be a pass here now for, I would imagine, Sean Kenny, but certainly that was Fontenay's discipline to lift him down slightly there. Let's just see if it's going to be Sean Kenny that is going to be the taker, and is he going to go for score here from just inside the middle of the field? It will be basically a 65. It's going to be moved in now for defence, and now a rather difficult three to come, a very, very hittable one. Michael Boland is here. And his left half back, David Kenny, do not get involved. Sean Kenny will be the taker. I'm not sure if the brothers are not, but the referee is out there. The linesmen have been very vigilant. Kenny looks at it again, standing straight on. You know, it resembles Peter Hogan the cricket. He sends her in high. He tugs it to the left, I do believe, and wide. That's what he does. One would have expected them to come back down. Now, the belt of the full back would be taken out of the full back. Oshin doesn't. second half, a chance here now to make it a three-point game. 11 plays seven. That was an opportunity there now to make it push to five points. This could be a two-point swing. You will put your house on McRickard here, who's been errorless thus far. Bends, lifts, strikes. Does it stay? So now, all you can see now is we're into the melting pot, one hit, there's it, lots of time left. Here it comes, Fontenoy's going hard for it, full back, Oshin, Duggan has it, away they come, going short, down comes to the corner, forward from Duggan, still Duggan, Duggan rounds his man, has an opportunity, has the advantage, sends him in left. But McCricket will have an opportunity here now to make it a two-point game. Almost automatic, that's how good he has been. And of course, this is where Shane Boland is a major, major loss to the opposition. This to make it a two-point game. So the wind advantage of the first half didn't appear to help the Fontenay's. And it doesn't appear to be doing much thus far. But still, we're only in the sixth minute here of the second half. How will Turin react? They've been under the cosh. Fontenay's finished the first half well and it started the second half splendidly. Bends, lifts, strikes, converts. Two, four, five. I have him at seven, eight points score. Well, seven, I have him at the moment. I could be wrong, of course. Douglas with the long puck out. They're not going to chance in the round with the short one, but. Ball comes off of Regan, comes now to Freeman. Freeman still has it, looking to flick it down far side of the field, does so. Chance here now for Lavin, Lavin, but this one's going to drop short. Drops into McCartan, but that was a weak shot. Down comes to Sean Duggan. Sean Kenny is there. Good play by Greeley. Inside it comes. Boland unable to get to it. Ball across the top by Boland, still Boland, rounds his man, the cricket after him, Boland has players in support, he has going to go for score from distance and he's going to send her in and he sends her over the bar, that's a good score for Boland, he had a man to his left, a man to his right, he likes to go for score, good score, lifts the seed, now we're down now again to a two point game, one, a three point game, one nine plays nine, into the eighth minute of the second half, McCartan with the puck out, comes out, stands out of the field, Ball breaking. Here comes Mr. Pierce Oak. Pierce Oak is on it. He's looking to win it over from play. Takes a shot. Sends a high. Sends a straight. Sends it over the bar. Good score. End to end stuff here now. That one from play. Not taking the chance. Putting the hand up for that one. We're two in. It's a two point game. Douglas. Down the pipe. 
Is it going to be kept in play? It is kept in play here by Lavin. And he gets to Joe Boyle. Back it comes to Lavin. Lavin off the left side and he sends it high and he sends it straight. Off his weaker left side and that's a good score. Important score when he sends it high. Boyle done well there to just give him that little bit of space and it comes out to McCartan. McCartan trying to find a centre back here now. Willie McCartan. Not sure if they're related. He throws it back inside now. And the ball is struck and it's going to be a sideline cut. Sideline cut is going to be to the Fontenay's. Comes off there. Ronan McCricket is the man that struck it but it was partially blocked down. Sideline cut and the sideline cut will be taken by Rory McCricker. McCartan is out giving directions. The goalkeeper that is. Good cut it is. In they come. All they come down and it is. Comes back far side of the field. It's going out far side of the field and now it's going to come to Regan. Regan has it. Regan's going past his man now. He has Kenny in support. Still Regan. Still Regan. Inside he has Ruan and he's going to go on his left side and it's going to go ahead. Off the left side, Sean Regan. Fine score from Sean Regan. His first important score. Man coming Substitution on, now on the Leitrim Matthew team Lenehan. number five, Matthew Lennigan, will replace number two, Ronan McRickard. Five for two, Leitrim. Matthew Lennon comes in for the right full back. Unable to start due to an injury. Now we'll just see how he gets on here now. Moving over into the other corner is Robbie O'Hare. Robbie O'Hare. He goes over to the other corner. Sideline cut comes out. Or rather the puck out comes out. They have it. Man that has it is McRickard. McRickard getting it over far side there now. It's going to come inside. And it's going to be a chance here now. But once again to send her high. Is he going to be sent her straight? He's gone out to the right and wide there. Looked as if Freeman had it. But it went to the right and wide. Two wides now to two in the second half. You'd have put your money on Freeman in that case. Didn't work out for him. 11, 1, 11, 14 plays 10. Out comes the puck out again of McCartan. They're all up for it. It's going to drop kindly here now. Winning the three is McCricker, Sean Regan. There's nothing to it, says the referee. Is he going to go to the book? He's going to talk to Sean Regan. McCricker. This is in his wheelhouse here again. Sean Regan going to be spoken to. He's after had a quiet first half and he's after having a very good conversion. I'd imagine this is going to be a car to buoy. This to make it three points. You put your money on McCrickard again. No, he's not going to take this one. It says might be just outside of his wheelhouse and it's going to be left to Rory McCrickard. McCrickard obviously the man from distance. But certainly the way Pierce Rogue has been striking them, one would put the house on him. All those people from County Down and County Mayo and Holland fans in Ireland and in all parts of the world, we say hello. Ball, Chugaji, Kingspan, Breffney sent in. Is it going to be converted? Sent to the right and wide. Now, once again, Bobby Douglas. Two wides apiece. This time, Douglas goes over far side of the field. David Kenny, I believe, the man on it. Kenny from distance. He's going to drop her in around the house. Is it going to drop short? It is. It drops nice and comfortable there. McCartan does very well back inside. McCartan, I do believe, coming out is the free coming out there. And that Fontenay's, but certainly they just weren't as sure on that one. I thought perhaps that McCartan was going to take that one in the hand. He didn't. All they come, ball breaking down, and it's one under the Fontenay's. Fontenay's has it. He's trying to get it, but it's well read by Pierce Oak. Pierce Oak is having a brilliant game. In across the top, this one comes. This is going to be an important one. A fine intercepts. Pine getting it now to Freeman, still Freeman, still Freeman has it, Freeman has fouled a chance for Kenny now to lift the seed, probably too far out, is he going to leave it to Bobby Douglas, not quite sure, but certainly that was an opportunity and a wayward pass by the Fontenay's, went in across the top, Kine done well to intercept and launch the counter. Just on his own 65. Dropping back players to Rina, prevent defence as they call it. Sometimes you have what four defenders up there and only two attackers. Sent in high, sent straight. No, sent to the left and wide. So that's three wides, two in the second half from place balls from Kenny. McCartan, Mihal with the puck out, taking a look at his options. Going down right side of midfield. Up they go. Joe Boyle is up. Ball comes across the top. Ball coming in. Referee says it's going to be pushed on the ground. 
And who's going to be the taker? Is it going to be Kine? Is it going to be Kenny? Is it going to be Bobby Douglas? Well, 13 minutes into the second half, Kenny will be the taker. He's just outside his own 45 metre line. He's going to have to maybe look and see, is he going to go short? Because there's certainly no numerical advantage, a major disadvantage. Brian Morley was looking to go short. He didn't go. And that one's going to go long. Has it gone high? It's gone high, and that's the most difficult three that he had to take in the second half. But Kenny, and it certainly, he made it look simple from there. Long, long range effort. Down the field they come, and here comes McCartan taking a look at his options. Stand side of the field. Up they go. Ball breaking. Picked up by the Fontenoys. Still Fontenoys. Opportunity here now to double on it. Well won in there by Tiernan Murphy. Murphy sending her in high. Is it going to be converted? And he has indeed. Good score by Murphy. Got one before half time. He's the second one. That's a good score. Man down there now is Brian Morley. Referee says needs a little bit of attention. So 112 plays 11, 15 plays 11, five point game. Man warming up there now for Turin is number 24, Stephen Lenahan. Rather 21, John Cassidy. Morley is up, Morley's okay. Going to go out towards the full bag with this one, Michael Morley. Still Michael Morley. The full bag has it, still Michael Morley. Getting it across to Pine. Kenny with a chance here now. A late challenge, not quite sure. Did you see contact with made? Looked as if Pine, Stephen Kine, had. Lost possession. He's going to speak now to the centre half back, Willie McCarthy. So Marley's been withdrawn there with that injury, so going in for him there. But that was a little bit dangerous by Turin there, trying to play that one, the short one. You know, it's uh, melting pot stuff. Kine is down. Kenny will be the taker. A chance to bring it back to a five point game. 15 plays 11. Keeper, a referee is talking there to the centre back, and another card to be there for the centre back, Willie McCarthy. Substitution on the Taurine team, number 21, John Cassidy, will replace number 12, Brian Morley. 21 for 12, Taurine. So that's a substitution now in, a couple of subs in now for the Fontenay's, and now that's the first one, I do believe, introduced. In case we had Sean Regan starting. Cormac Lynch started, and he was replaced. And now coming in, Matthew Lennon has also come in for three defensive changes for the Fontenay's. Can this one be converted by Kenny? Time will tell. 50 metres. Left side of Kingspan Brefney. Heading towards Balyon Kowan. Something going on, not quite sure what the linesman is saying. Is it a blood sub? Is it a blood sub? I do believe it is. So Sean Kenny now has been stopped just as he's about to bend, lift and strike on that one. The player coming off for the Phantom Eye seems to be in trouble with an injury. Kenny strikes. Kenny sends her in. It stays inside the post and it's converted. That's the might count. That's Kenny's fourth point. Temporary substitution on the Leitrim team, number 18, Brendan McKay, will replace number 9, Conor McCricket. 18 for 9. Substitution is in, ball breaking. Can Regan get it? It gets a touch on it. Now it's Boland on the run. He's been chased down as Boland, still Boland. Boland rounds his man, strikes, sends her in high. It's going to come in towards Delaney. Delaney has it, Delaney loses it. Delaney turns, Delaney strikes. That's a fine piece of skill. Looks as if he was completely bottled up there. Had the half chance of the goal. And looking outside him was Liam Lavin. He decided to keep it on the stick. Turn, hit it across the shoulder. And that fa fabulous score by Delaney. Up they come again. Ball coming down. Ball inside. Good. Hustled in there by both sides, not quite sure. Is it going to be thrown in by the referee? 17 and change gone in the second half. 17 plays 11. Do the maths. Just for cl clarification, it was 18 for number three, Oshin Duggan, was the blood substitution. Referee wants everyone away. Ball thrown in. 
Well coming in, it's going to be well dispossessed there back inside. McCricker demanded the want on the ball, had it, lost it. And now it comes to Regan. Regan has Boland in support. Boland wins the free. Boland has shipped a lot of heavy challenges there today again, and the two 11s colliding there. The referee is going to be speaking to somebody here. This has not been, in fairness, a dirty game. Man is a couple of men down there, but I'm not quite sure how they are. Linesman is going to speak, James Staff is going to speak to the referee, uh, but uh, it will be a free for Sean Kenny. They won't be that disappointed if they're just eating time off the clock. 18 and changed on here in the second half. Boland was the man that was has taken a lot of heavy challenges today. Uh, one of them actually he had converted, but it was a free at a different part of the field, so it was a turnaround. Kenny will have a chance to make it a seven point game. Yellow card. And in the red helmet gets a yellow card. It's number 16, of course, the man who was introduced here, Daniel McCann. Boland handle a lot of leather. He's up, he's hobbling. You just see how he does. Kenny has a chance. He's taking a look. Back inside. Looks as if I'm in and out of cover, so I'm not quite sure what happened as Kenny sends her in. Looks to have tugged it to the left and wide. That is in fact what has happened. So that's four wides in the second half for two read. Michael McCartan on his own small paral parallelogram. He's going out to his cornerback, Robbie O'Hare. O'Hare has it. Still O'Hare. Still O'Hare. Tuck backs. Illegally so says the referee, so it's going to be McCrickard who will be, that's Rory, he will be the taker and you know this one's going to head for distance. He probably knows what his side needs, he's going far side of the field, gets it over far side of the field to his full forward. Full forward, turning in, drinking inside his man, good play there by McAlernan. Back inside now to the advantage. Three coming down to Boland, once again Boland intercepts and he gets the hefty challenge as he does so. He read that and he read that beautifully. It was slipped through the hand. Charlie McAtenon and advisor were advancing downfield. Bowden, as I said, has been in the wars all day. I don't think that Turing can afford to lift him because he has been a very, very inf influential player thus far in this game. 21 minutes gone in the second half. Fontenay's Reversal the there of the temporary substitution and so Oshin Duggan, number Oshin three, Duggan. is now in. returning to the field of play wearing and number 24. Making way for him. Ball sent in around the house. Ball, well, wonderful piece of fielding. Pull back in there is the pull back. Wonderful piece of fielding back in there by, you just see the man with the white helmet. Free coming out. One of the substitutions, in fact, was the man that made that uh, wonderful catch. A cricket, this time operating a full bag. Ball up underneath this one. Ball breaking. Sean Kenny has it. Sean Kenny has it. What is it going to be? Is it blocking off? Did you see what happened? Somebody had blocked off. It's going to be McCricker now to another score. It's number 24 actually had made that fine catch. Didn't see him being introduced, but Tony Young is the name that I have here. And this is bread and butter to Pierce Oak. Today's top scorer by a distance. Sends her high, and he sends her to the left and wide. That's very, very unusual. He has been errorless in his strike in this day. Bobby Douglas, in his parallelogram, referee is in position. Douglas, I don't think he'll be going short. He goes long, down the left side. Freeman trying to get onto it, but it's once again the Fontenay's coming out with it. This time Rory McQuicket has his pocket picked. She's on the carpet down there now. It's hard to see just who has it. The linesman, I would imagine, is getting close now to... Ball is in, but again the pocket picked and it's sent in there by Delaney. It's going to go over the bar off the left side of Owen Delaney. And that's a wonderful score. The pocket was picked, the ball was slipped in, and he struck it. Just hadn't got... He choked down on the hurl, and that was a wonderful score in very, very tight space. And that's one that the Fontalize have not get away. Up they come. Joe Boyle is there. Still Joe Boyle. 
free there of Joe Boyle. Went for the, had the arm held back there. He went for the gap. Has handled a lot of leather. I'm very, very surprised in the first half in particular that the Leitrim Fontenay's allowed him to be the extra man. I know they were playing sweepers, but time and time again, Bobby Douglas hit him with short puck outs, and time and time again, he landed ball in on top of his forward, sprayed it left, right and centre, particularly in the early going where Cahill Freeman caused a lot of bother in the early goal and had a goal and two in the first six, seven minutes of this game. 23 gone in the second half. The scoreline says 115 to 11. She's never over till she's over. 18 plays 11. Sean Kenny with an opportunity to make it 19 to play 11. Both these teams coming from small pockets of hurling and keeping the game alive and keeping the game thriving. Kenny strikes, sends her high. And he sends her straight and through and over the bar. Good score from Kenny. This time McCartan going out left side. They're all up. Boland is there, taking the breaking ball, losing it. Bends the back, has it back. Still Boland. Has Ruan inside. Or Ruan. Not quite sure the proper pronunciation. Takes the time, sends her in, sends her high. And he sends her straight and he sends her over the bar. That is a wonderful score from the right side of the field. It came from the puck out of McCartan. The ball was tucked down. Who was there? None other than Boland to win the puck out again. Out it comes. Here it comes the Fontenay's. Centre back is the man on the ball. I believe it's Willie McCartan. Turns back in, or rather it, maybe it's going to be a dangerous one in around the house. Ball in. Out there to the danger area for the minute. Lovely no luck pass inside. Here comes the man they want on the ball, Sean Duggan. Sean Duggan has it. Yeah. From Duggan, that's exactly what they needed. It was a turnover that they needed. Duggan had it. The man they had it wanted dangerous one, and he got it in. And Substitution on the Leitrim team one. number 11, twenty. Anthony Laverty will replace number ten, Paddy Joe McComiskey. Twenty, 20 for ten, Leitrim. Number twenty is in now for the Leitrim Fontenays. Laverty he replaces Paddy Joe McComiskey. To the 26th minute. That's just what they needed. They need a couple, maybe at least one more, but there's still a six point game. Ball in across the top. In they come. Fontenay's have it. Regan there trying to stop them coming out. Free coming out. Free coming out. Man to foul. Robbie O'Hare. Certainly that was a, a, an opportunity there for Turing to clear the lines, and that's just how dangerous the Fontenay's are. Ball coming in. Just the man that's on it now, McCrickard. Has it. Turning inside his man. Sending her inside. He's fouled. And he will have an opportunity now to bring it back to a five-point game. Right, put her over, put her over now. Is he going to go? Yes, referee is making his way in, and this will be a chance, as I said. He's pretty much a nailed-on free-taker, is Pierce Ward McCrickard. He did miss the last one. This one will be taken just as we strike in to the 27th minute of the second half. There will be a bit of added time. A couple of subs there getting warmed up on the touring sideline. McCrickard sends her in, sends her high, and he's converted, her, sends her over the bar. 117 plays 112, five pint game. All to play for. Douglas goes far side of the field. Out to Freeman. Freeman has it, Freeman lost it. Freeman has it again and lost it. Here they come again, the Fontenay's. Ball in across the top, another cold chance here. Coming back out, that's good play by, and this time, it's going to be sent back out to Freeman. It's a dangerous ball. Again, here they come, the Fontenay's. All to play for. McCrickard has it. Still McCrickard. Still McCrickard. Is he going to go for goal? He's going to send her back in. Back in it comes. Inside it is. Ball still inside. Regan unable to get it cleared. It's going to be a throw in here now. We'll see what's going to happen. It's going to be thrown in, but this game is far from over. 27 and change. Referee getting ready to throw her in. Pick off your points. There'll be two or three minutes left in this. There's still five minutes left to play. Fontenay should not panic, in my opinion. Here they have it. It's going to be hit over the bar. This is going to bring it to four points if they don't go for the, the juggler with this one. 28 minutes gone by the time this will be hit. 
how quickly a game turns. That was an opportunity there to clear the lines by Tureen. They didn't. They were well bottled in, and McCrickard is going to look at his options. I would imagine he'll hit our crossbar height. The keeper stands in front of his five defenders behind him. He elects to send her over the bar. Substitution on the Toreen team, number 20, David Harrison, will replace number 15, Owen Delaney. Owen Delaney's had a good second half, they've lifted him, he's got to cut the scores out of nothing. Put in the bigger man inside. Going in there now, number 20, David Harrison. Waiting until Owen Delaney makes way, referee blows the whistle. He's on again. This time Douglas goes down the pipe. Up they go. Ball in across the top. Harrison is in. Harrison is there. Touches it on the ground. Free coming out. Referee. Very diligent and vigilant on that occasion. Everybody getting very nervous. Both sets of supporters. In across the top. Here they come. Man that has it now is the left half back, Davidson. Good play. Boland coming away with it. Free kick. It's going to be taken now. It's going to be an opportunity now for that man, Sean Kenny. That was a wonderful play. I believe the cornerback, Connor Henry, was the man that blocked that one and got the hand in, flicked it up to Boland. The man that will be taken will be Sean Kenny. 117 plays 113. It's a four point game. There will be at least five additional minutes at the end of this half, at least five additional minutes. Five minutes, four points, all very, very doable. (laughs) Referee keeping an eye on the clock. So they're loading up the defence. Not sure that that's the wise thing by Turin, but that's the option that they're, they're going with. Kenny bends, lifts, strikes, sends her in. She's going to drop in. It's going to be out. Is it going to be out for a 45? No, it's gone out to the left and wide. Somebody got a stick on it. That's five wides in the second half. Fontanise of two. Four point game, that was an important one. Out they come, centre back Willie McCartan has it. He's going back inside to his keeper. Keeper, of course, an accomplished forward. He hits her on his left side downfield. Centre forward is up for it, ball breaking. Fontenay's on it, Fontenay's losing it. Away they come, the man that goes away is Lavin, still Lavin. Still Lavin off his left side, that one's going to drop short. Dropping her short, he needed maybe to regrip, and even if he hit her wide. McCartan doing the right thing by going in across the top. Boland is inside, but it's going to be back inside. So Boland back in. Well won inside there. Now it's back outside. It comes out far side of the field. Kenny, is he going to hit it off his left side? He's going to try and hit it into the corner to Harrison. Can Harrison get it? Harrison does get it. Harrison still gets it. Harrison from an acute angle sends her in high, but it's going to go out to the left and wide. He had a man inside, didn't see him. Six wide, second half. Two minutes into the second half or into added time and it's still a four-point game, still all to play for. Probably a goal needed. Ball in across the top. Kine has it, still Kine. He's going to try and get her in across the top. Freeman's in the foot race. Freeman is in the foot race with the 24 man. Still Freeman inside, unable to get to it. The man that gets to it is number 24. That man, of course, is young. Back inside. Here comes the Fontenay's again, going from distance. They're all inside. Dangerous ball in around the house. Ball inside, a chance here now. Inside, it comes back inside, back inside. And it goes out to the right. No, it's gone out to the right and wide. No, it's going to be a 65. Into the third minute of added time. 65 will be taken. I would imagine that Pierce Ogue will be taking her and I would imagine that he'll be dropping her short. She's 117 plays 113. Do the maths. 20 plays 16. All Ireland semi-final. Intermediate. End-to-end stuff here in the second half. Very, very exciting stuff. Bend and lift and strike, and I think they're going to maybe leave McCrickard in around the house himself. Would he get a touch on it? Bent, she's sent in high, in she goes. She goes high, she goes high, and she goes straight, and she goes over the bar. 
Substitution on the Turin team, number 18, Gary Nolan, will replace number 9, Daniel Huan. Daniel Huan has been replaced by number 18, Gary Nolan. Now well, we're into the fourth minute of stoppage time. For four of five. Three point game. Goal will be needed to tie her up. In it goes, in across the top. Keeper has it. Turn him back inside. Ball is picked, ball is sent in high, ball is going to be, is it going to be out for a 65, no, and the quick one is taken, the keeper comes out feet, or rather quickly taken, the quicker the mark, going to be picked off the carpet, picked off the carpet, says the, got a very, very cruel decision there, but I think he possibly got it right, Rory McCricker has put his heart and soul on the line, but he's looking to the linesman, but the linesman cannot, in fairness, he cannot overturn the free. <coughs> The quick one was taken and beautifully taken by McCartan as he struck that one. That was an opportunity to ice the game by, um, although it was over elaboration and fairness by the Fontenay's coming out the field. It was an opportunity to ice it. They didn't get enough timber on it there. I think the man that hit it might have been Brian Morley. No, Brian Morley has been called to shore, but it certainly was an opportunity. We're into the last minute and this will be taken by, I would imagine, Sean Kenny. He is looking to put his side into an All Ireland final. He sends her high, he sends her straight, but is it straight enough? It's sent high and it's over the bar and it's a 5 4 point. Lead. Is that enough? Still all to play for. Still all to play for. Is that enough from Kenny? It's a four point game. We're into the last minute. 30 seconds as we say to go. Ball in. Ball is still going downfield. Just what maybe they didn't need. That was the time maybe that they needed to go long. The Fontenay's. They elected to go up the field and go short. But they still have it. Is there a goal in it? They're now into the last 15 seconds. Up they come. The man who got the one goal. Is there a next one in them? Is Duggan. Wins the free. It's going to be probably taken short and sent in around the house. He has to have Pierce Oak. Pierce Oak, in fairness to him, has... Substitution on the Torian team, number 24, side. Stephen Lenehan, will replace number 10, Liam Lavin. 24 for 10, Torian. Liam Lavin being replaced there by number 24. That number 24, Stephen Lenehan. Inside it comes. Ball broken back out. Kenny is there. Kenny is... Did he get the nudge in the back? The final whistle goes. Touring folks are into the All Ireland final. They deserve to be in the All Ireland final. They were made fight all the way by a gallant Fontenay team. Leitrim Fontenay. I've always found the down both players and supporters to be very, very fair. No doubt that they would say that they didn't get enough scores today from anybody other Pierce Oak. Pierce Oak McRicket, in fairness. There was a better spread of scores from the opposition, from the winning team. Liam Lavin chipped in with scores. Fergal Boland, for my money, very close to man of the match. Sean Kenny, Owen Delaney, Cahill Freeman, Sean Regan. Then when you look on the other side, you had a couple of scores from Tiernan Murphy. Sean Duggan got the goal, Pierce Ogan, and then Conor McCricket with a point. But certainly, if I look, one, two, three, four, about a dozen scores from McCricket. They didn't get enough scores from, as I said, an even spread of scores. Fitness-wise, I would also imagine that uh, it looked as if Turin had it, and that was without them missing the talisman, Shane Boland, and normally and their captain, who plays at top of the right. For Turin, from the small village, indeed not even a village, just a chapel and a shop outside of Ballyhawness, right along the Galway Mayo border. They'll be very, very happy. They will qualify today to beat the winners of Limerick and Wicklow in the All-Ireland semi-final, but we wish... The uh, Fontenay's elite from up there just between Castlewell and Bambridge Town and the county down. The very best of luck as they keep the game alive and well and thriving up in the red and black country. So the team that was formed in 57 and won their first uh, senior title in Mayo in 66 and have won a lot of titles since. They went through a period where they won 10 in a row and maybe 18 out of 20. Then in the early going uh, of the 20th century, 21st century, Keith Higgins and Cohen Valley Harness, they started to dominate. Back have come the underage setup and the full marks to them today where you see the fruits of their labours as they will now go to Crow Park and try and get a Horland title folks yes that's right a Horland title for the boys of Mayo the girls of County Down and Clondoff yesterday won an intermediate club title so Down and Fairness have always competed at a great level in Horland but Mayo this is new territory to them and wish, wish them the best so from Kingspan Breffney Park from Calvstring to all those people from County Down and County Mayo and other parts of Ireland that in all parts of the world those that are in the hospital we wish you all a happy and holy Christmas and we hope that maybe in the new year that we'll have more positive news on all fronts and that people will start talking positive and maybe encourage all those people and newscasters in Ireland that maybe once in a while they could have a good luck story rather than negative 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 we live in a great wee country folks Slán of Bannock Jay from Kingspan Breffney Thank you.